Hey, welcome to the how-to section of this video. I am Metasol and this is Wolfgang. Why don't you say hi to everyone since it's your first time doing a video with us? Hello. So Wolfgang is our co-creator here. He did some of the really hard stuff and he's going to help me explain to you how to actually build your own Epona. Yes, we know it doesn't actually look like Epona, uh, but that's not the point. You know, we already have Link in this style and we don't have Epona, right? So why don't, this game's all about making, why don't we make our own? That's That was our thinking. Obviously, we're not gonna make a functional Epona that looks like Epona, that's impossible. But we can use our imaginations and say, hey, you know what? If I can ride on it and I can do stuff while I'm riding, like use the uh, sword or use the arrows, then you know what, to me, I'm riding on Epona in Mario Maker 2. That's the idea. So if you guys think that's cool, and I do, I think we could do like a whole new class of Link levels called Epona Link. You know, like, it, hey, come check out my new Epona Link level. So that's the idea. This is not meant to be like a rock solid level where everything is completely unbreakable. It's meant to be like a showcase of this idea and the different ways that you could do it in your own level. So let's get to it. How do we make the first setup? So the very first thing is the basics of all of this is this setup right here. You have a Monty Mole and the Monty Mole is important because he goes where you face. So he wants to follow you everywhere. So that means you can control him. Next, we need a chain chomp, and he's important because when you blow him up, he leaves a stump behind that you can stand on. So that means you can ride the Monty Mole without killing him. Yeah, and you can't stack a block on top of a Monty Mole. It won't like stick onto the Monty Mole's head. And only a chain chomp will do that. Right, you can't even put a, a pal on a Monty Mole's head. So yeah. the for some reason, when you kill a chain chomp, the, the, uh, the stump will fall down and stick to Monty Mole's head and follow him wherever he goes. And and that's just kind of unique. And so we're gonna use the bomb to kill the Chain Chomp and the bomb's range doesn't allow it to also kill the Monty Mole. So that works that way. Now, why, does, why do we have these blocks here? So we have these blocks here, they don't move, right? But look closely at this one. This is a little different. See that? We got wings on this block and the wing blocks always fly to the left. So that means we have the stationary blocks on the left. And what we're trying to do is crush the bomb. Yep. When the bomb gets crushed, it makes it explode. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put your wing block here, it won't work. Okay, guys, just through through experience, we've realized that this is the best place to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't always want to use blocks for your setups because blocks, when they're blown up, in general, do not respawn. I, I could say with confidence that they don't respawn reliably. Okay, in some styles you'll see in some situations they respawn. But if you're really worried about your setup respawning, then you don't want to use blocks. And we'll get to that later. But this is the very first section of our level. So respawning is actually not an issue because if you come back here again, then you're dead and it's going to respawn after you die. It's just not going to respawn like if you go off screen and come back. So yeah, uh, in, in the first part, it didn't really matter. So we'll just show it again before we move on. See how it blew up and it left the stump on top of my mill. Let's see it again. Boom. Okay. Yep. So just the flying block, the flying block just crushes the bomb and explodes it and it takes the chain chomp off his stump. Mm hmm And so you notice how we could shoot arrows while riding. We could change the direction of the Monty Mole. Now, the, what's cool is the Monty Mole always travels at pretty much the same speed when you're trying to go forward. Like, if you go forward, back, forward, back, you're going to slow him down. But he's pretty predictable if you don't do crazy stuff. So we could have these note blocks at exactly the space that he would jump. And he he's pretty reliable at always landing on the note blocks. Like you'll see, unless you slow him down a lot, he will hit those pretty much every time. Mm -hmm. So that allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. When you can predict what the things are gonna do, boom, you got something. So this, we thought it was cool to put a raised pipe up here because the only way you can get in this pipe is by riding on our version of Epona. So we thought that was pretty cool. It's like an Epona check. Did you kill your horse? Well, you don't get to go through, buddy. 
So that's the idea. This is also right, right here. This piranha plant's a link check because only Link can kill this. Small Mario can't kill it. So yeah, we make so you keep. Opponent is two blocks high, and you can't go in the pipe if if you're not two blocks high. Right. See, this is two blocks right here. So you gotta have opponent. All right, let's move on. So each section we have a different Epona. So we're gonna go over maybe some of the differences in the setups for each section and why we changed certain things because each section has a slightly different setup and slightly different mechanics that you gotta be aware of when you're putting this in your levels or your levels are gonna break all the time. So you can see that it's similar but we're missing a block right here for this setup. Uh, we just replaced it with a normal ground block because it performs the same function. So if you're going to put your setup right adjacent to where your ground is, then you don't need the explodable block there. You can just use the ground that's already there. So that's good to know. Um, and then why the heck do we have these spikes here? Well, there's a really good reason why we have spikes here. That is because if you get on this Goomba, and you go to the right, he's extremely predictable. And then if you go to the left, he's extremely predictable. However, if you bring him to the left far enough where he hits the wall, now his whole jumping pattern changes just slightly, but it's enough to throw off any complicated mechanisms you might have later on. And we have quite a complicated mechanism coming up, so we had to have as much predictability as possible. Is it perfect? No. Can it still be broken? Yes. But the idea is if they turn around and hit the wall, the player's going to think it's their fault that it broke because they're actually going to get damaged by the spikes, right? They're not going to want to go to the wall. Like this, we as the creator are telling them, don't go to this wall or the spikes are going to get you. So if they hit it, and the mechanism doesn't work, they're gonna be really happy about retrying again because they feel like it wasn't the level that killed them. It was that their mistake. And you don't ever want the player to think that it was the level that killed them because are you gonna wanna retry a level if you feel like it wasn't even your fault that you died? So you gotta be really careful of that when you're creating levels. If you want people to enjoy your levels, that's a big thing to look out for. Now, why do we have, why the heck do we have two Goombas down here? That's totally different than the other setup. Yeah, so the two Goombas just keeps the shoe Goomba stationary. And like uh, Meta, Meta Soul said before, if, he, if the shoe Goomba bounces off the wall, then it messes up the pattern. So we have to keep it stationary until Mario or Link gets on Epona. So why didn't we just attach the boot to the to the muncher. Do you know why? Why do we have two Goombas here? Well, that's because the two Goombas uh, get destroyed once Link hits the on-off switch. Correct. So we have, actually, if you look at this, you might not have seen that, but if you look really closely, there's a on-off switch block here. It's, it's the blue outline. Okay, so when you go up here and you switch this on, it's going to destroy this bottom Goomba. And so why do we have two Goombas instead of one? Well, when you start the level, go ahead. Yeah, when you start the level, like, I'll go ahead and start it. Yeah, they all sink into each other, so the hitboxes sink in. So when you hit the on-off switch, it destroys both of them. So check it out. So the other, th why did we even have this set up in the first place? Well, we initially didn't have the on-off switch set up at all. We just had this uh, Goomba guy jumping around in his boot. And you had to stand up here and like time it perfectly like, oh, when is he going to be here? When is he going to be here? Oh, and then you jump off and you get on him. What we found out is that was kind of tedious and a pain in the butt. And we wondered if there was a super reliable, super cool way to make it easy to get on Epona. I mean, like if you're gonna, if you have a horse and you wanna get on him, do you want him jumping around while you're trying to get on him? No way. So he notice Epona is absolutely still, he's being really patient waiting for us to go. And then when we tell him to go, he goes. How cool is that? Now notice both of the Goombas died. We just found that out through trial and error. Initially we only had one Goomba, right? But 
we found out that you needed two because they both die. All right, and then when the on-off block switches on, you're on the same level as the spikes, so you're just traveling in that same predictable motion. And we put the arrow right here to let the player know, hey, this is where you shoot your arrow because if you wait, it's gonna be really hard to shoot him without getting hit by his hammers. So this is like the perfect place to shoot. And then after you get here, you're gonna have to have, I mean, usually you only have one chance to get this uh, pink coin. Now we didn't put an indicator for that because we consider the pink coins extra. So that's some like something you have to go back and figure out. Now we'll tell you something though, uh, there is, this section is kind of like, you have to do it right or you're not going to be able to get through. So if you wait too long, if you go back and forth too much, this spike guy is going to destroy the ice and you're not going to be able to, to finish the level. Also, if you go back and forward too much, um, there's other things that could happen. Like I said, if you hit the wall or maybe if you didn't kill the hammer bro, he takes your link suit away, stuff like that. So you want to get this section down where you're following the indicators and you keep moving right. And if you do that, when you, when you land on the note blocks, it's going to dispense a muncher. So let's see if I can show that right here. And that muncher kills the spike instantly, which releases the key. And you're going to be deposited right up here by the door. And you're going to be able to go in the door because you have the key. And also because if you look right here, you need a stump here to stand on to get in the door. So why do we have the bombs there? Ah, yes. Oh, that's because uh, we need a screen lock. So if you go to the left, okay, like all the way to the left, and go up. There's a ghost right there. Ah, look and, at this ghost, guys. Yeah. I, I hate to show you the next part, but I guess you've already seen the gameplay. So this is our flying Opono. If you use your imagination, this is our Pegasus Opono, the horse with wings. And we really, really wanted to have this in our level. But you know the problem with ghosts is... What's the problem with ghosts, Wolfgang? Oh yeah, they can go through walls. Ghosts can go through walls. And they don't do what you tell them to do. And they don't behave the way you want them to. They just kind of have a mind of their own. They just... They invade other parts of your levels. But if you have the screen lock, then he won't even appear at all. Now we're going to combine two tutorials in one. We're going to show you how the heck do you make a screen lock. So if I move these out of the way right here, you're going to see a thick line right here. See, it's thicker than these other lines. That shows you the edge of the screen. Now you can make a screenshot, uh, a, what is it called? Screen lock anywhere you want, but it's easiest to make it here because it tells you that you have the correct size all right and then when you fool around with screen locks you'll see what i'm talking about but so what do you need to make a screen lock actually you only need the outside screen lock right here okay but it looks a little messy sometimes so we like to do it on both sides of the thick line to make our screen locks and the way you make a screen lock is you extend that wall all the way across you can't have any breaks yeah. no breaks at all and you can't even have slopes see the slope right here okay because we have this one screen locking it's okay but if we didn't have this one screen locking then this top one is not going to work at all because this slope is in our screen lock Sl slopes interfere with your screen locks that we found that out through trial and error we were like what the heck is going on we have the solid wall and it's still not working it's because of slopes so again we're coming back to the bombs why the heck do we have these bombs here you want to explain that wolfgang yep that's for the screen lock so hard blocks are breakable but they still do a screen lock Right, because they count as ground blocks. Like other things like note blocks or uh, even switch blocks, mm -hmm. they don't count for uh, making a screen lock. Yeah, and s but the screen lock was in the way of the door or like where we were going to do go. So we just blew it up. Right, see, we wanted the stump to land here. And we didn't want to have to move the entire door down here because everything would be too crammed together. It just... It, it didn't really work for us when we were timing out the jumping of the Goomba. It didn't really work. So uh, we had to have this kind of distance for what we wanted, but we we're running out of screen space and we had to have the screen lock to prevent the ghost from invading our territory. So 
we had to make this temporary screen lock. And because the bombs are red, they explode very quickly. So when you're on about this part of the screen, as soon as they spawn, they're gonna explode like like very quickly. Yeah, which is right? very convenient because they don't explode when they're all the way off screen and mm -hmm. you need the screen lock. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're gonna see that a lot in your levels. Uh, so the way this game works is once something comes on screen or sometimes just before it's spawning, it's like active, right? Yep. And you're gonna deal with that issue throughout all your love and making process. So just keep that in mind. This bike is just here because if uh, the mechanism breaks for whatever reason, you can kill yourself and not get soft, soft locked. All right, so we go in the door. Where does the door go? It goes right here. This is our next section. We thought this section was so freaking cool. Okay, so this is the Epona that can climb on walls. Oh man, we were so excited about this. And then we thought to ourselves, what if we have not one, but two Eponas? Or maybe it's representing opponent jumping back and forth. I mean, however you want to look at it, we're not taking this too literally, especially visually, but we're just trying to give you the idea that, hey, you have a mount, you have something to ride on that can get you to places you otherwise could not get to. That's what a mount does, right? So, and it's link, it's a link level, so that's why we're calling it Epona, okay? So I don't wanna hear it in the comments that doesn't look like Epona, that's not the point. It's The point is you're riding and you're shooting and you're sorting. So, um, so what do we do here? We wanted to time it out so that this Epona, number one Epona, reached the same place at the same time as number two Epona, but we wanted to make it look cool so they traveled in a completely different way. So right here we have munchers instead of breakable blocks. And that's because when you go through the other section below this, they, they trigger. Yeah. And when you go through the door, Mm -hmm. Breakable blocks don't respawn, so the, mechanism, the mechanism won't work. So the chain chomps will still be on their stumps. Right, you don't want chain chomps on your stumps because you won't be able to ride it for very long. Now the munchers are considered enemies and all enemies respawn when you go through a door. Yep, and we made these safety tracks so mm. that they don't squish Epona. Yes. Or spider opponent. So you don't run into that problem when you do explodable blocks, which is why we like them. But if you have multiple screens and multiple setups and you're worried about uh, kind of respawning issues, then you know what? You got to use munchers. And if you use munchers, they damage the enemy that they fall on. So it would fall down and kill this guy. And he can only take one hit, so that's not good. So this is what we call a safety track, and it takes the muncher away before it can hit this guy. And then we don't want it falling down here, because it will spawn when you're down here. We don't want it falling on you and invading this level. Yep. So we have this second safety track to trap it, our trap track. Okay. Here, it's a little bit different. We have the safety track, and there's no trap track, because we're at the edge of the screen. So we can just throw it off screen. All right, so let's go over this section again real quick. Hit this, trigger the vine. Now, everything goes at the same time because we just came through the door and the timing is always the same. Now, it looks like one's getting way ahead, but because of the way we designed it, they're all gonna equal out when we get to the end. Now, I'm a little bit behind here, but let's explain what this is for. Why do we have a bomb check here? Well, you're gonna need this kind of setup in your levels because if you don't have a bomb check here, Link can run way ahead. He can go super fast, way faster than Epona, which is kind of funny because Epona's a horse, but let's, you know, let's not be too hard on, on the realisticness of this. But he can he can outrun Epona, and if he does, he can off-screen Epona. And when you off-screen something, it messes up everything. So this is to prevent you from off-screening opponents, to slow you down. And we found out that you can't break it uh, yep. at least no matter we don't, we don't think fast. you can break it if that's there yeah. so it slows you down enough yeah we've tried to go as fast as we can but we still can't off screen opponent with the bomb chain. right see i'm trying to go oh that was terrible <laughs> uh, but i was trying to go fast but see i got up here really fast and i didn't off screen opponent um you could go even faster but it still doesn't off screen them because of the bomb check okay and so when they finally get up here, because we did a lot of trial and error, they're on basically the same level. 
Okay, and then... Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. Just We thought it'd be really cool to have a section where you jump back and forth using your bow, riding your mount. There's no way to get, get up here without a Pona. That's the idea. He's, he gets you places you couldn't go before. Yep. So we get through this level, and what is this? Well, let's not go over absolutely everything all at once. Basically, what it is is an opponent check, right? So you have to be standing on something two blocks high to get in the door, first of all. All this extra stuff is just extra. The, the note blocks are there so you can have more than one chance because if the note blocks were not there, opponent would keep riding up this wall and he would go on the ceiling. And when he goes on the ceiling, he loses the stump. The stump falls down. So obviously you wouldn't get a second chance through the door. But if you put a note block here, he bounces off that and changes direction. And so theoretically you get infinite chances to go through the door. Uh, now, the part that Wolfgang designed, I really, I saw this somewhere, but I couldn't freaking make it work. I tried so hard. And then Wolfgang did it first try. So we're going to let him explain what this thing is in front of the door. Okay, so this right here prevents you, well... You can go in the door, so start it. Okay, so I'll start it up. Yeah. So you can go in the door because that moves out of the way. Right. So, but when you go in the door and then try to go back out, it won't let you. So mm -hmm. it will push you back to where you were before. So right. go back to now, the- Now, why did the block, why, we just said before that the block didn't respawn. Why did the block respawn this time? Or why would it respawn this time? Well, that's because it didn't get blown up. It didn't get blown up. That's the key. It just got trapped. Yep. So it will return to its starting place after you go through the door. So if you try to come back through the door, it will not let you. Yeah, let's okay. demonstrate that real So quick. let's see if we can demonstrate it. Where are we it's going down. after down. this? We're going to the flying room, right? Yep. And then we have down here a reset door because we're nice. So you don't, we don't make you die to retry. Yeah, it just resets that's, the ghost mechanism. That's a good motto. We don't make you die to retry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's see what happens when I go through the door. See, it won't, it Boom. won't let. Now, we still didn't really demonstrate why that was important. So mm -hmm. let's go up here and demonstrate why it's important to have that door. So we're going to take our flying Pegasus up a little bit. And now let's say that we we got the alignment a bit off. Okay. Let's say we even lost our Link suit. Okay. Oops, we made a mistake. Oh, no, we got to kill ourselves to start over. No, we don't. We, we can retry instead of dying. So we like to retry instead of dying. So we can go in the door. And we had the problem, we wanted the opponent check there, so we couldn't put ground there. So what we ended up doing was we put that cool contraption that lets you like see the other room but not actually go through the door, and that reset the boo. Did you see that, guys? So if I go here, and then I, I move the boo up. So the boo is, is going to be way up here. Come on, come on, boo. All right, and then I come down. I want the boo to reset, right? So I can start over. So this allows me to reset the boo. It resets the whole mechanism again, puts the stump back on his head, everything. Even the um, bonsai bill is reset. So there you go. That's why we did that. Now this part is pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty much the same mechanism. We have a safety track, throws it off screen. We used a muncher so we could respawn it and we liked the idea of we can control which direction the boo goes. He can fly. It's like Pegasus Epona. And we had a little switch check here to make sure that the player is on the correct switch because so it doesn't mess up the rest of the level. Also, we liked it because it's kind of difficult if you don't know the trick to hit this while you're on the boo and then get off and everything. So it's an added challenge. Now, after you go through the door here, you're gonna come out in our favorite. I say favorite because it's a pretty scary section. Uh, it's the Ludwig section. So you're gonna come out of this door right here and you're gonna fall. And you always are gonna land on Ludwig. Here he is. We used a block this time. 
Why do we use the block? Because you know what? If you mess this up, you kind of have to die. Like there is so many things that are going to kill you. So we didn't have to worry about like going off screen, come back on or whatever. You're just going to die, start over from the checkpoint, which we had a couple screens ago. And then, then everything's going to respawn because you died. Yep. So it was no problem. Uh, you always land on Ludwig. Sometimes the, the characters are really predictable like that. So it's nice. Uh, why do we have the springs here? It's just to help him get a little higher. Because if it was, if we didn't have him, we'd have to make everything lower. Yeah, if it was just regular ground, he would like walk on the ground for a little bit. Oh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, start yeah. flying. Yeah, it starts the action faster too. That's another good point because it changes his behavior a little bit. When you put the springs, he jumps right away. When you don't put the springs, like like Wolfgang said, he walks. Look at all this craziness. This is just the result of a bunch of trial and error until we found out where they all ended up. Yep. And we just thought so that was so much fun. Bounce, bounce, bounce on them until we get into the pipe. Yep. And it, it's a little tough. You will die here. I know we did. Um, don't try to grab the vines. That, that's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. So when you go through here, where do we go next? We end up in, uh, what's his name, Larry? Uh, Iggy. Is that Iggy? Yeah, that's Iggy. Uh, I'm going to trust you. You have a really good memory. Um, but you know what? Let's just show everybody so they don't have to wonder. Okay. This is... Iggy, and you're right again. You're always <laughs> right, dude. You have the best memory in the world. Okay, so you come out here, and you, and you know what? We've tested it a million times. You always land on the stump, which is on Iggy. Everything yep. works great. Now, this was really tricky, and I needed Wolfgang's help to make this actually work every time and not get broken so easily. And okay, so the first two tracks are basically the same. You have the first track which holds the muncher which throws the muncher onto the safety track safety track and then the safety track if you didn't have that other track mm -hmm. like right there to catch it right then it would go right on no up oh really it, it would go come... on the put it would go on oh, that track oh yeah 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 see track. this track right here it would fall on this track and then start moving on this track yep and so uh we put a track right there mm -hmm. because we did not want it to go onto that other track. Right. And then we put it, we threw it up mm -hmm. onto that track so it doesn't go anywhere. It just bounces, it just goes back and forth. So I had to do the trap track up here instead of way down here yep. because this track was in the way. And we had to throw it up because we uh, Iggy moves right and we'll, yes. we would have run into the muncher. Yeah, if we put the trap track here, you end up running into the muncher and it kills you. That's not good. So all this other stuff is just trial and error. We we found out where everything goes and it times out nicely. And these springs are necessary to move Ig Iggy along. Because yep. if you don't do that, Iggy will kind of stay in the same area. It's pretty obvious. Um, why do we use spikes sometimes and munchers others? You want to answer that? Well, that's because there's a part limit and munchers are part of the part limit and since this is such a big level we had to use spikes which does not use a part of the part limit right so spikes count as like ground or whatever and you can use as much yeah, as so that you as you want as many as you want mm -hmm. so the p blocks here are just for added difficulty really just so you have to do something here before you can progress. Because, you know, to be honest, a lot of this is auto. Yes, you have to, like, realign yourself and use the shield twice and make sure you don't fall off and don't panic and everything. But once you get used to that, it's mostly auto. So we want to have an extra little challenge. We also wanted to have a checkpoint and a power up here. So when you do get the checkpoint, you get a link suit. Uh, the P-switch is up here that you got to shoot. So when we go through this door, where do we end up? We end up in the boom boom room, I the think. Boom boom room. So that should be. Yeah, it's to the right. All right, yeah, right it here. is the boom boom room. So you come out of the door, and for whatever reason, you always fall and land on boom boom's head here. I think part of the reason is because boom boom always wants to go towards where you're at. Yep. So this was really, actually, really easy to line up, even if we were a little bit left, a little bit right. It's just the it, same. You know, it would work. It's just the same bomb yep. chain shot mechanism. And then here we have the safety track. Yep. No trap track because it just falls off the bottom of the screen. 
All right, so moving on. Uh, Boom Boom is steerable, so we could get him to move. The cool thing about Boom Boom is not only steerable, but he also doesn't shoot things, so you can ride him for a lot longer without getting damaged. That's why you couldn't spend too much time on, what's his name, uh, Ludwig. Because yeah. if you, we had to make it so that you jumped on those bonsai bills quick, or else Ludwig randomly would kill you, or at least take away your suit. Yep. And the other cool thing about Boom Boom is that he jumps. So yeah. we made these like little obstacles which right. Boom Boom can jump over. Right. And, and we made piranha plants so you had to shoot them before they hurt you. Yep. So if you don't shoot them, you're going to you lose your link suit yep. and then it'll be hard to progress. Mm -hmm. And it was tough to fine tune this, man. It's, it, I'm telling you guys, it took a lot of trial yep. and error. But that's just because we crammed like 10 levels into one level, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, for your level, you probably just pick one of these that you like and then just do it like a normal size level. I have a big problem with making levels that are too long. I guess it's just like the kind of level I like. But um, I, you know what? When I play a short level, I really enjoy it too. So I just, I'm not really good at making short levels. I just want to keep going. But I, I swear we could just break this up into separate levels. All right, so here we have the build blasters. And yeah, we had to work on this for a while. Why do we have the conveyor belts going the opposite direction? Well, that's because... It slows down the shells that you can stand on. Right. So it's easier to get on it, but it's still pretty hard. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because you just like flick the controller really lightly and do it at the right time. But yep. it's even harder if they're going fast. So we thought this was better. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this is kind of cool because we don't do conveyor belts the whole way. If we did, the shell would stay the same speed. So we thought it'd be more exciting to make the shell go faster at this part. And then you got to be really quick with your sword to get rid of these guys. And then uh, we initially had the spikes going all the way, but we thought it was pretty difficult to get in the pipe every time. So we wanted to slow it down again and, and it just worked out better that way. I thought it was more fun to go slow, fast, slow. So now we go in the pipe. Of course, we need a Pona to go in the pipe. So it's an opponent check. All right, so when you exit the pipe, you're going to land on Bowser every time. Now, why did we choose to put two stumps on Bowser this time? Well, that's because if you use your sword on top of Bowser with only one stump, then you'll hit Bowser and that would knock you off. Because in Link's physics, that just pushes you back when you hit Bowser. Right, and then why did we choose to use a big bomb instead of a little bomb? Well, a, a little bomb wouldn't explode both chain chomps off their stump, so we did a big bomb. Yep, and then we and have safety. And we just moved the pipe a lot higher, so the big bomb doesn't explode Link. Yeah, you gotta watch out for that. Okay, so let's demonstrate that real quick. Land on there every time. Yeah, before we did do some tricky stuff with the shield to get through it so that our own sword and wouldn't knock us off of Bowser. And it, at first we were kind of okay with that and we just left it in, but then we just felt like, you know, it's a little too finicky, so we wanted to make it better. All right, so this next part is gonna drop you off to this area where you can go over here and get the key coin. This is pretty cool. If you shield it twice, you can get a spike. All right, and if you go over here, this this part was so tricky, it had to be revised the most out of anything, but we just thought it was so funny, this this setup. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> now, it is a little bit fragile. We've made it a lot less fragile, but I mean, if you look at it, it looks fragile, so it only makes sense that you could break it if you are not careful. Yeah, like certain speeds, the bottom part like the Montimo at the bottom goes right or left more than the top part, so it can kind of break itself. Yeah, exactly. All right. So now we're waiting for the P-switch to run out. Why did we put the P-switches here? Oh, we put them there, so... Let's see. Um, why did we put the P-switches there? That... So why did we put them there? I don't even remember. We put... So see all these walls here? P-switch wall, one-way wall, one-way wall, one-way wall, all that stuff. 
We ended up doing that because if we didn't slow the player down, then they would eventually knock themselves off and break the contraption. Oh, right. So we put the P-switch wall there because if they hit the P-switch and went right really fast, oh, then yeah. they would accidentally collect the fire flower. Yeah. So if you hit the P-switch and your, your Monty Mole stack is going really fast, you'll collect the fire flower and then it won't trigger the uh, seesaw. I mean, we do have an endless pipe here, but... We, it'll also take away your link suit. Yep. So he, if you lose your link suit, you won't be able to do this part. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason that we put two one ways here is to trap the stack. And so you, if you can't move around, it's harder to break the contraption. Yep. And then the reason we put this setup here instead of just a um, on off switch where you could reach it with an arrow easily or with a sword especially is because why is because so you don't hit it two times because you can't spam an arrow or a bomb as fast as you can with a sword because a sword you could just go psh, 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 mm -hmm. like really really fast so we and we didn't want that right because if you spam the sword really fast money mold down here will move faster than you do up here and then when you spam the sword Monty Mole will be able to go through, and then he'll get uh, killed by the the on-off blocks. Yeah, and the whole stack will just and then we'll just yeah, get the shortened. Stack wall and, fall down, yeah. get shortened, and get messed up. Mm -hmm. So using this method, it kind of prevents you from hitting it twice quickly, mm -hmm. which is all we want because you hit it once, and Monty Mole starts moving forward, and then you go on to the next part. Oh. Uh, also, we had to have this on-off wall here for another reason because of these dangerous guys. Mm -hmm. So we had to leave the bombs in here because we just thought it looked really dramatic when you go through here. Uh, but they're very dangerous for the contraptions. If your Monty Mole stack gets too close as this explodes, it will also explode your stack or you or both. So we had to keep you over here. So when you hit the switch, it explodes from a distance. It's still exciting, but it keeps your contraption intact. Mm -hmm. We have another one way here to keep you moving. Um, oh, to keep you trapped. So you're going to be trapped between this one way and the blue blocks when they turn on. And then you're going to do the same thing you did before over here for the same reason, because mm -hmm. we don't want you to spam the on off switch yep. and kill the contraption. So I think you forgot about the one ways at the seesaw. Oh, right. We did forget about that. So why the heck do we have... See, I almost never put one ways in my level because I think they're ugly. However, in this special instance with this super delicate contraption, we felt like the player would have a better experience mm -hmm. if we had them in there because it would make the contraption a little more durable. Yeah. So, so why, why does this make it more durable? Well, if you go to the left of the seesaw, then the right of the seesaw lifts up. Yep. But if you go to the right of the seesaw, then the left of the seesaw lifts up. So then if you go left while the left of the seesaw is still up, then you'll run into that P-switch block where the fire flower is. Yep. And also the other problem we had is this seesaw is actually a semi-solid. So uh, if you go forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, on and off, eventually... Uh, part of your stack is going to get lifted apart by the se moving semi-solid seesaw, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So it, you can go through it, but it can also grab you. That's what semi-solids do. So yep. they, it'll eventually break your stack if you keep going forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. So we want to prevent you from doing that so that it would stay intact. Mm -hmm. Now, like originally in our level, if you just kept moving forward at a normal pace, it would be fine, but we weren't really happy with that. We wanted to make it a little more durable. Even though this level is more of a uh, presentation of what the possibilities are, we just felt like it wasn't durable enough. Mm -hmm. So then here we have a little trap, and that's just to hold the stack still while you take care of business over here with the arrow telling you to down shield so that this guy can't snipe you as you as he's coming on screen this block here is to prevent you from hitting this twice because if you hit it twice 
you're gonna mess up the setup and the ending won't look as cool. Yep, and when you hit the on off switch, it blows up the bomb and the blue blocks behind the bomb turn on so you can walk across and it also releases the munchers which squishes the bottom piranha plant and makes a path for you to walk on. Right, so these blue blocks and the munchers that fall down will fill in this path so you can walk across. <clears throat> Excuse me, one thing that happened to me that's really interesting is I got here and um, I thought I killed this guy but then I, I didn't and he fireballed me and he took away my link suit and I'm sitting here like, dang it. I, I think I was trying to clear check the level and I'm like, huh, is there any way to beat this um, without the link suit? And actually there is. So you got to get really lucky and boy, did I get lucky. I did a max jump over the top landed on this switch jumped again and landed on the flagpole <laughs> so it is possible but not very likely i just got super lucky so that has been the how-to section of our video i'm metasol and this is wolfgang for pixel forest games if you like this video please like if you, if you want to see more please subscribe you can hit the notification bell to be notified when we do another video thanks for all your support guys see you next time bye bye <laughs>